Hi, this is Richard C. I'm a math tutor at Wise Ant. I'm answering a question submitted by a student. This is a typical question that you would get when you're studying vectors uh, in pre-calculus. Also, this is a question that resembles pretty much what you would see in physics if you were to take physics. Um, and so it's uh, and it's a real life question. So I think all of that makes it worth discussing. I've put the solution up here and I'm just going to talk you through it. First thing we want to know, know is uh, we want to draw the airplane airplane, which as you can see, it's this larger vector and has a reference angle of 80 degrees here. That's because the bearing, the way bearing works is that this is zero degrees bearing and then 90 degrees bearing and then 180 degrees bearing here. So um, so the bearing of 170 would be uh, 90 plus 80. And then we'll sketch the um, the vector for the wind, which is 200 degrees bearing. So here is 90, 180, 270. So you come down here 70 degrees. That's your reference angle. And the speed of the wind, the strength of the wind, is reflect is shown by the magnitude or the length of the vector, which is 80. And you can see the airplane has a much longer vector at 460 miles per hour. Okay, so we have to turn these vectors into what's called component form, and you can see here, this was done in this in this step up here. It's 460 cosine 280 sine 280. Um, you can see that the the magnitude is 460. That's going to be 280 degrees. If you start here, you go around. That's 90. 270 and then 280 to here you see so we're starting at zero here 90 180 270 and then 10 more that's where the 280 comes from and then you just go on your calculator and you evaluate this and it becomes 79.9 comma negative 453. For the wind vector, we put this into component form and we have to find the wind now. So it's going to go, we're going to go 90, 180, and then 70 more to get the uh, 250 as our angle. See, it's going to go all the way around to here. And then uh, we just multiply this on the calculator and we get that. So now we can actually write uh, the vectors this way, which is going to make everything a lot easier. Because the, the combined effort of the wind and the airplane is going to produce what's called the resultant, which is this it's it's u plus v and i apologize my letters got a little mixed up here this is this is v here and i wrote u here instead of w this would be w plus v i don't think that's terribly confusing so but this would be a w plus v here i'll just write over it so this would be w plus V. And um, so you just add these two. So it's 79 minus 27. And then negative 453. Um, not minus 27, but plus negative 27. These are, it's, we're adding, it's addition. So it's 79.9 minus 27.4. And then negative 453 minus 750, 752. I'm not sure how I got 
Yeah, that's right. Negative 453 minus 75 is going to give you negative 528. Okay, now we need to answer part C, which is the uh, ground speed and direction. So this is called the resultant vector. This is the vector that would re come as a result of these two being added together. And let's figure out if this makes sense, <clears throat> this answer, before we go any further. So here's the airplane going pretty fast in this direction, but the wind is going to pull it to the left. So you would expect this reference angle of 80 to get a little bigger. It should pull the airplane to the left a bit, I should say to the west. And um, also it should speed the airplane up because this is generally going south and the airplane is generally going south. So let's see what we get. So we take the, to find the tangent of the angle here, we take uh, y over x and we get uh, negative 10 point, so, point something. It's hard to read my own handwriting, negative 10 something. So this angle here, this total angle here is going to be negative 84. Sorry, from here to here is going to be negative 84. So you can see it instead of being negative 80, it's pulling it to negative 84. So it's pulling it slightly, just as what you would expect. And um, the bearing, if you wanted to write it as a bearing, you'd have to you'd have to add 90 plus 84 to that and get 174. As far as the speed is concerned, it's just the size uh, or length of the vector. This is the resultant vector is going to be running. Basically, let me try to draw it here. Let me add a color. You know, I can't really draw this very well. This certainly can't draw it to scale, but it's going to be a little bit this way and longer. So that's our resultant vector. And so its reference angle is going to be negative 84. And the magnitude is going to be longer than the 460 here because the wind and the airplane are both generally going south. So this went from 460 to 530. I think when you're doing these, a diagram is essential, first of all. Second of all, uh, even if you didn't think it was essential, I, I don't see any other way of doing kind of a sanity check here. I think you want to do a sanity check on the bearing and the speed to make sure that you have a result, you have an answer that makes sense. So I think the diagram is helpful all through all these steps, but especially at the last step. Okay, so that's it. You'll see a whole bunch of these uh, while you're studying vectors in pre-calc, and you'll get used to it. The first time you see it, it, it's pretty it looks pretty complicated. Okay, take care. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.